There is a C64 screen on a TV. Anything special about that? Yes, you see it right. There is an Arduino Nano and some resistors that emulate a Commodore 64. I came across this project while looking for inspiration for a new video. And I found this. I couldn't believe it was possible and at first thought it was a joke. But then I wanted to get to the bottom of it and tried it out. See what I found. Let's go. So I put an Arduino Nano with two resistors on a breadboard and connected it to the composite input I made to an old black and white TV. Then I downloaded and compiled the two source files that belong to the project. And this was the result. Very disappointing. And after some try and error, I finally got a startup message for the VIC-20. But then I got the idea to go further and emulate a C64. But first I want to show you how the emulation works. The core is the emulator function for the MOS6502 processor. This is basically a function that selects an opcode from different memory areas of the Arduino depending on the value of a program counter. The following switch instruction then decides which assembler instruction we are dealing with and sets the CPU registers and flags accordingly. This emulator function is called repeatedly in the loop function and so the Arduino actually executes 6502 machine code. But that's not all. We need to emulate 20k of ROM and 64k of RAM memory as well. But there is only 2k of RAM available on an Arduino. So what can we do? Here is the memory map of a C64. In the first 1k RAM bytes are page 0, the CPU stack and various variables used by the kernel and basic interpreters. Of these, 819 bytes are mapped to a C array in the Arduino's RAM. Then comes 1 kilobyte of video RAM. This is also completely mapped to an array. The largest block is the 38 kilobytes for the basic programs. For this we have only 128 bytes left on the Arduino. But wait, we still have 1 kilobyte of EEPROM, right? We can use that for our basic programs as well, squeezing out one more kilobyte. The 20k of ROM finally goes into the Arduino's flash memory, of which we have 32 kilobytes. And these are the functions where this mapping actually takes place. The ROM consists of three large arrays in three header files. The kernel ROM, the basic ROM and the character ROM. Due to the keyword procmem, they are all loaded into the flash memory. I downloaded the ROMs as binary files and converted them to C arrays using a hex editor. And there comes the C64 welcome screen, but the line breaks are not where they are supposed to be. What went wrong here? The answer is simple. The C64 has a resolution of 40 by 25 characters, while the WIC20 has 22 by 23 characters. And because we still have the WIC20 emulator here, the line breaks after 22 instead of 40 columns. So I modified the video generator here as well. Let's see how it works now. The characters to be displayed are in a reserved portion of the RAM called screen memory. This holds an exact representation of what we see on the screen. The graphic chip then reads these characters or better said, the Petsky values corresponding to the actual position of the electron beam. These are then looked up in the character ROM, where each 8-bit value corresponds to 8 adjacent pixels and is shifted out by a shift register and sent to the TV or monitor. In the emulation, the video output is done by an interrupt service routine which is triggered by an Arduino timer. This happens exactly every 64 milliseconds, so each call to the interrupt routine sends exactly one scan line to the screen. It starts with the front porch, the synchronization pulse and the back porch. The bits that belong to the 40 characters per line are picked from the character ROM and clocked out by the shift register that's normally used for serial communication. Finally, these output signals are all mixed together with two resistors, a wire, and a diode. Now the video signal is ready and we get a nice picture on the TV. But we still can't enter any programs yet. 
so let's connect the keyboard. In an earlier video I already explained that many USB keyboards can also handle the PS2 protocol and this protocol can easily be implemented in an Arduino. So I did the same thing here as well and type in a little basic program. Cool! The screen flickers a bit when I type something and this is because the keyboard input is processed in an interrupt routine. This interrupts the video output, causing a short drop out of the video signal. And you can see that the Arduino actually executes basic code. I will now try it on my relatively modern TV in my living room. And it looks great here as well. Now I am going to test how fast this fake C64 is compared to a real one. I type in the ridiculous basic program again and measure the time it takes. And do the same on a real C64. There it runs much faster and I already expected this outcome. This is of course just an educational fun project. Apart from the low speed and memory, the emulation is only black and white, has no sprites, no sound and it is not even possible to save and load the programs. So it is definitely not possible to play any of the classic C64 games on the Arduino. This emulator can run on the larger Arduino Mega 2. So there is 6000 bytes of memory and I could also implement the 320 by 200 pixel high resolution mode of the C64. Here is a picture of my cat. Impressive, isn't it? If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find the files on GitHub. The link is in the video description. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and check out the other videos on my channel. Subscribe and enable notifications so you will always be notified when I post a new video. And I want to buy this car. Blah blah blah. So, I would also appreciate your support through Patreon or PayPal. That being said, it's time to say thanks for watching and see you in the next one.